Edward Snowden, obviously an issue that our readers and our viewers are very, very fascinated about. Yesterday we had Eric Holder saying that he'd be interested maybe in having a conversation with him. There's this big debate, obviously. I don't know if it's reached the highest levels yet, but you know, what to do with uh, Snowden, you know, is there a chance for a pardon, is there a chance for clemency, or on the other hand, we have, you know, the, the kind of crazy people talking about wanting to kill him. Uh, what do you think uh, is going to be, uh, how is that going to play out in Washington with your knowledge of, of, of the city? Well, uh, I don't think it's clear yet. I mean, I don't think that there's, uh, uh, first, of all, I, first of all, I do think that it's clear that the issues he's raised, right, uh, and, and and to not coming on how he, he raised them, but now they have gotten to a level where people are, are looking at the NSA, its practices, and what's appropriate for government to do or not. And what kind of assurances will government give in terms of what's happening with business data, what's happening with personal data, what will be the limits, what's happening with the data of, of international leaders. These have become uh, real serious questions. So, you know, is this going to come out like uh, Daniel Ellsberg, or is this going to come out uh, differently? I, you know, ultimately, only one person is really going to decide that, and that's the president who's going to decide something, something of this level. But, but clearly, I think if you'd, you'd asked me the question a few months ago, I think Americans felt at that time that he had let out national security secrets. I think at this time, you know, the, the pendulum is somewhere in the middle, and, and we, don't, we don't know when when he's finished and where this pendulum, you know, is, is going to wind up. I mean, with yesterday's ruling, uh, you know, sort of, it's kind of hard not to say, though, this guy did something that had po very positive results uh, on a massive scale. Well, again, I think if you're going to look to the, the only case study in American history that, that would be similar, it would be Daniel Ells Ellsberg. And so, you, you know, I, I don't personally know enough about all of, all of the facts for me to give you a direct comment, but this is going to come down to whether or not you think at the end of the day he damaged national security and, and, that, and that can't be forgiven, or whether or not he, he, he brought up, uh, you know, or whether or not he is in the mold of a Daniel Ellsberg, and, and I think that the president's going to ultimately going to have to make that call. You are, of course, a master of messaging, so does it become a question of just how it's being framed, you know, whistleblower? Uh, versus, you know, traitor. Well, look, I, I think the important thing, and, and I think even from Snowden's pers perspective, this is not about him, it's about the issues that have been raised. And, and I think the, it's, it, I find it interesting, really, how did journalism not uncover these issues earlier? You know, frankly, I had a, I had a tour of the personal tour, you know, a kind of a fam tour with the CIA, kind of had a lunch, and I asked the question, do you listen in on all the phone calls? And the head of the then CI director just smiled and didn't answer the question. Well, that, that was an answer. And so it's quite interesting that uh, journalism should be looking at itself and saying, how did they miss this story all after all these years? How did they not ask the questions or demand, or demand the answers so that it came to something really actually many years later when you, when you think about it?